Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kodrowski and this organic chemistry video covers alcohols, ethers, and epoxides, their physical properties. Intermolecular forces are important in dictating the physical properties of alcohols, ethers, and epoxides. All molecules have van der Waals attractive forces or London dispersion forces. Additionally, alcohols, ethers, and epoxides also have dipole-dipole attractive forces. Alcohols form hydrogen bonds as pure substances and also with any molecule that has a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom incorporated. The strengths of these attractive forces trend from weaker to stronger, van der Waals being the weakest, dipole-dipole a bit stronger, and hydrogen bond being the strongest type of intermolecular force. We'll see this when we compare the physical properties of three different molecules, an alkane, an ether, and an alcohol. The alkane has only van der Waals attractive forces, which is the weakest type. The ether adds dipole-dipole attractive forces. The dipoles can be seen here with the partial positives and negative charge indicated. These dipoles allow it to line up and form a dipole-dipole interaction with another molecule of ether. Alcohols have van der Waals attractive forces, dipole-dipole, but they add hydrogen bonding, which is a very strong type of dipole-dipole interaction. I've indicated that here with the dipoles on the molecule showing with partial positives and partial negatives. Here I've shown the partial positive on hydrogen is very large, indicating that that's an important dipole that forms a very strong dipole-dipole interaction. The intermolecular forces influence boiling points. The alkane has a very low boiling point at minus one degree Celsius because it has just van der Waals attractive forces. The ether is slightly higher at seven degrees Celsius. Dipole-dipole adds a bit of attractive force, but it's still pretty low. Adding hydrogen bonding makes a very large difference because this alcohol molecule now boils at 97 degrees Celsius. All four of these molecules have pretty much the same molecular weight and pretty much the same surface area, so the comparison between intermolecular forces is pretty telling here that hydrogen bonds really add a lot of attractive forces. Alcohols form hydrogen bonds, and this slide just summarizes some of those characteristics. Alcohols can form hydrogen bonds as pure substances. Here's an example of an alcohol showing its large oxygen-hydrogen dipole. If we put another one in there, we can see that the dipoles will potentially line up, and that's indicated by this red dotted line, which is showing a hydrogen bond forming between the hydrogen of one alcohol and the oxygen of another. As a pure substance, alcohols form hydrogen bonds. They can also form hydrogen bonds with other species that have oxygens, nitrogens, or fluorines. One example is water. Here's an example of an alcohol again with its dipole, oxygen, and hydrogen showing. The alcohol can form hydrogen bonds with water as shown here, where the partially negative oxygen of the alcohol can form a hydrogen bond with the partially positive hydrogen of a water atom, and also the partially positive hydrogen of the alcohol can form a hydrogen bond with the partially negative oxygen of another water molecule. Hydrogen bonding is important in alcohols. Hydrogen bond strength is affected by steric strain. We'll show an example of a tertiary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, and a primary alcohol. These alcohols have differing amounts of steric strain. The most sterically strained alcohol is the tertiary. It's just difficult for two of these molecules to get together and form a hydrogen bond. It's a bit easier in a secondary alcohol because they're not quite as hindered, and with primary alcohols, it's the easiest. These have the least amount of steric strain. The strengths of hydrogen bonds correlate with the amount of steric strain. Weaker hydrogen bonds form in molecules that are more strained, and stronger hydrogen bonds form in molecules that have less steric strain when they get together. This is reflected in the boiling points. The tertiary alcohol here has a boiling point of 83 degrees Celsius. The secondary alcohol has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. The higher boiling point is saying that there's stronger intermolecular forces in this molecule compared to the tertiary. And then finally, the primary alcohol has the highest boiling point at 118 degrees Celsius. This is because it forms the strongest hydrogen bond. Now, there's also a surface area component to this. The primary alcohol has more surface area than the secondary alcohol, which has more surface area than the tertiary alcohol. But that's a kind of a minor effect. Really, the big important thing here is the strength of the hydrogen bonds. This slide describes the water solubility of alcohols. Alcohols are abbreviated OHR. They have both polar and nonpolar parts. The OH part, the hydroxy group, is a polar part, while the R group, the carbon group, is nonpolar. The hydroxy group, the OH group, is hydrophilic, it's water-loving, while the R group is hydrophobic and water-fearing. The solubility of the alcohol in water depends on the size of the R group. 
Alcohols with small R groups like methyl, ethyl, and propyl are water-soluble. Here the OH group dominates the solubility characteristics of the molecule. As the R group gets bigger though, the 4-carbon alcohols, the butyl alcohols, start to become water-insoluble. They're no longer miscible with water. They can't dissolve in all proportions. They're only somewhat soluble. As the R group gets even larger with 5-carbon alcohols and beyond, they become increasingly insoluble to the point where we could say essentially they're insoluble. The take home message is the solubility of alcohols overall is a function of both their polar portion and their nonpolar portion, and the size of the nonpolar part dictates their solubility in water. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.